Deep Dive Film School makes no claim of ownership of the film footage used in this episode. The film footage is owned entirely by the copyright holders. Also, we're going to spoil the hell out of this movie, so this is your warning. Welcome to Deep Dive Film School. Oh, this week we are going to get into that one scene from, you know this scene, the leg lamp scene from A Christmas Story from 1983. Oh, oh. Fragile. Fragile. It must be Italian. <laughs> I am Adam Sherlock. And I'm Adam Pulcher. And if you like what you see slash here, please like and subscribe. You can find us in all the spaces and places that people what? Find good media, Sherlock. That's right. We mm -hmm. do festivals. We do one-on-ones, punishment reviews, that one scene, dissections, all kinds of things. Absolutely. Um, now we're in the Christmas cheer. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh -huh. We are. Uh, uh, we, we, you know, we thought about what uh, last year we didn't do that one scene. We actually we did a Christmas vacation. Yeah, we did Christmas mm -hmm. vacation. But I think we the year talked before about... that we did Home Alone three punishment review. That's right. We did do. It's Home getting Alone it's three. hot on the search engines in uh, in the holiday season. Yeah, so even watch though out for technically. That. Not a Christmas movie. Comes Just out right after Christmas. <laughs> it's true. You're right. Technically, yeah. it is not. Yeah. Just like we have classic Christmas episodes and timeless episodes. Yes. Um, this would be a timeless Christmas movie, and I always love, you know, if if I was an artist that could do whatever I want, I would absolutely try and do a Christmas movie because if you make that movie once, like this, like an Elf, yeah. like a variety of Nightmare other movies, Before Christmas, even you know like, yeah. Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street, yeah, uh, yeah. it's a wonderful life. Yeah, it's a wonderful life is actually probably the best example because people still watch it to this day on Christmas well, every and, year. And what's interesting with a Christmas story is that it wasn't a hit when it first came out. It was kind of like eh, it came out in eighty three. Um, interesting. Is it just uh, Bob yeah. Clark that directed it? Um, who also did? Uh, uh oh, oh, we're going there already on Bob Clark. Well, just the fact that Bob Clark made both one of the very first home invasion horror movies called Black Christmas, and then also made a Christmas Story, which is like one of the no. most lauded like classic movies yeah. of all time. Also, you know what? You remember what else he did? Is it Karate Dog? He did do Karate <laughs> Dog. <laughs> He, Fuck, this show has ruined me. <laughs> uh, he did. Uh, also did Porky's. That's right. He did do um, Porky's. And, of course, you, your favorite. I, it's not a trilogy yet, but hopefully one day it will be. Uh, Baby Geniuses and Baby Geniuses 2, <sighs> Super Babies. Hey, listen. So... One day we'll get what, that. We'll get the finality to what the, is my, We'll what get Michael, some closure from... What did Michael Caine say? Uh, <laughs> I, he never saw Jaws the Revenge, but he saw the house that it bought. <laughs> well, um, but, and that's good on you, Bob nice. Clark. I, um, I hope your kids are have great houses. But I want to... I, before we get to the scene, and this is the Fragile, um, a major the award scene. Lamp scene. Um, you know, when, when the movie came out, not a huge hit, but... It was part of this cultural zeitgeist because it was a movie version of a handful of stories by Gene Shepard. Mm. And I think for just a minute we should talk about Gene Shepard because the guy was such an interesting, he was this storyteller and orator who was on the radio for decades and decades and decades and was one of these guys where it was like before Spalding Gray, before Garrison Keillor, when the idea of being like a spoken word storyteller kind of wasn't a thing yet. Mm. He was this person who was like, spinning these yarns about his childhood and people would and he was a bullshit artist like people would say is that true and he'd be like yeah yeah mostly but it's, and it's so funny because they listen to that in the movie on the radio yeah. very similar type of thing exactly and, and and it's just funny that it doesn't land in some places yeah so and that's, that's why funny. and that's why they've added all that in and, yeah. and that's and it is gene shepherd that's doing the narration mm -hmm. through this which again obviously oh, okay is taken absolutely uh, i mean he's a huge part of it he's a, as much a character as anyone yeah else. and 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 so just so you can, most of these stories that made up this, and so you have things like the Drink More Ovaltine Ring, like, mm -hmm. and, and the uh, the original title of the, sh the story was uh, um, My Old Man and the L Lascivious Special Award that Heralded the Birth of Pop Art <laughs> is the name of the original <laughs> short story. Title. Um, now, how 60s is this? He didn't think that he could actually write a book because he thought he wasn't a writer. And he was hanging out at the Playboy Mansion in 1960 sure. with Shel Silverstein. Oh, yeah. And Silverstein was like, then let's do this instead. 
and he had he had he had a recorder, and 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 Gene Shepherd <laughs> can't even imagine. <laughs> I know, just hanging out in the pool by the with the with the Playboy Bunny and Huff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, so, and, 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 and half, so, sorry, so, uh, 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 Silverstein was like, I have this recorder. And so Gene Shepard just fucking told his stories. He just rattled them off and Shel Silverstein transcribed them. And then they together edited them. And that Excellent. became in God, we trust all others pay cash. Mm. The fir- first book from Gene Shepard, which made a Christmas story. So even though we think of it as this very wholesome thing, yeah. he also at the same time was like, he knew how funny it was to have the major award that dad has that's this leg, right? And there wasn't a leg lamp before this story. It wasn't a thing that ever existed. Sure, sure, but now it exists it's ubiquitous. for it's, it, it exists forever. It's it, apparently the symbol of Ohio. I don't know if you knew that. Oh, it's like oh, I hope so. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, it's like they they have a factory there that, <laughs> that makes leg lamps oh yeah, yeah. well I, you definitely people have them all all yeah, over I now i want to have sure. a nightlight of it somewhere yeah exactly yeah, people like, have this christmas tree ornaments exactly yeah. or the actual lamp in the in the in you know in their window yeah, exactly <laughs> um so i love that it's become this pop cultural thing and that's what i love about christmas movies because you can make this thing once but people will listen to it all the time it once a year tattooed in our it's, psyche. Yeah, it's a seasonal yeah. thing right but you're gonna sing jingle bells or whatever comes comes to town. All the all the fucking Christmas classic songs. How is that any different than a Christmas then you'll movie? Shoot, then you'll shoot your eye out. Yep, right. Exactly. Then, then, then like you're you want the gift and Santa won't get it for you. I'm thinking of a, a moment in this, even though it happens a couple times in the movie. The fact that it harkens back in the scene that we're doing made me laugh so much. Is the snake's nest of extension cords all into oh, the yeah. one outlet. And he's like, well, sometimes it's just too many. Just one too dude. many, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like literal flames. The, this scene. We, I was like, God, that's tattooed in my brain. This scene has to be one of the best. This movie in general, but this scene in particular has to be one of the best dad movie scenes ever. Completely. Come, you know, it comes down to Darren McGavin, uh, old man Parker's, um, <laughs> performance here um he is so fucking hilarious here and the dedication he has to this you know just to give some context of the scene you know this is one of the many anecdotes like you were pointing to in the book right there's there's all these anecdotes of going on in this family during this time yeah there's like and the major award stories yeah that kind of come yeah, and, and, go. and yeah. it's really the thread is the family that's yeah, really yeah. all we need and right? then it's the holiday season and but the whole idea of this dad winning this major award has been a theme through the the because earlier in the movie. It's like, like a Mensa like <laughs> quiz he did or something that he won. I mean, it's just one of those. You know what it's like, and and well, this is obviously now in the internet age, they're all over the place. But pre-internet age, it was the can you draw this pirate that's on like the inside of the matchbook, and it's like if you could draw it, you should go to art school, and it was totally like a scam. <laughs> but people would be like, ah, oh, I'm gonna fill that up, and it's like it's one of those from Reader's Digest or something that's like a test your IQ oh, quiz thing or something. I thought it was something he won from work. I thought it was something. No, and, and, he tells the neighbor, he's like, yeah, I, uh, did, you know, I took a quiz, you know, oh, I, I, don't I won it from a <laughs> quiz. Like, I think it's like a... It's a major award. Yeah. <laughs> Um, this is the major award. I just love that, you know, even at one point he's like, it, it could be a bowling alley. He's like, well, they're not going to deliver a whole damn bowling alley. But, you know, he's just like so hyped up about it. <laughs> and, and it's just his his unabashed excitement and pride. Because he won something. For this ridiculous leg lamp. That's yeah. right. It's like, what is it? What is it? He keeps bugging the guy who's delivered. He's like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, why would I know? <laughs> well, when they open, when he first opens this crate, which is like, it looks like the crate from Creep It show. looks like a it's fridge. Like, it yeah, could be totally. a fridge. And when the you just see all the hay in it and he's the by the way the score is doing so much heavy lifting in this scene because at first it's almost like horror movie it's like all like vibrato well, like and, trails, and the like, voiceover ah, too yeah and it's well, like no the old man's eyes were bulging totally and he's like looking in the crate and he's like there could be anything in there <laughs> that's true and that's the best part of this is yeah. that's it, and that's what i discovered re-watching this and analyzing this scene even though I've seen this movie a thousand times, totally. you know, um, is that tension plus anticipation can equal comedy. Totally. If the payoff is ridiculous like this. Yes. Right? Yes. And so I love that. I love 
his he's just more than anything like i can't tell if he's happy because he want just because he wants something and that's it or that it's sexy or that it's just uh, you know he, he, the anticipation is so high at this point it doesn't matter what it is all, d all of the above it's all of, it's the, all above. of the above <laughs> because and i think that that again to go back to shepherd's original shorts short story which had been filmed before this movie was made for a TV program. Was this supposed to be a TV show at first? Before they made the movie of A Christmas Story, there was an, uh, an anthology series on PBS uh, mm. called The Phantom of the Open Hearth. And and they were just like these little snippets, but they were taken from different short stories of his. And they did this one, and uh, it's the the dialogue is exactly the same. Hmm. Right. Even though like it's a cardboard box and the one that they did and like sure. it's not shot as artistically and the actors are PBS, you know, day players or whatever. But all the dialogue is exactly the same. And what it makes you realize is that what Shepard knew was inherently funny to begin with was this pride in having won something. Mm -hmm. The repetition of it's a major award. <laughs> the fact that it's this leg lamp, which which apparently there was a drink called knee high that was really popular like in the 1950s and that's like he was thinking about that because he was like it's this sexy ad but it's for a, just like a soda and he's like and like as a kid when you'd see the sexy ad of like these ladies like strong muscular legs you'd, it'd make you be like that's weird why is that there and he's like yeah. so i made it into this leg lamp and he's like but then the duality of the mother not being able to tell the father that's super tacky and shitty. Please don't put it in the window. I mean, so that's the, she's like just that through is, this whole scene. Like that's what the comedy so, is, right? Yeah, it's Melinda so, Dillon, the mom here, oh, is so good. No, I agree. I, I was just about to say the same thing. The opposite to what he's doing is Melinda Dillon and her <laughs> anguish of hating this thing. Anguish is the perfect word. That's the, like, <laughs> like the as soon as it comes out. <laughs> It doesn't matter. Ralphie's stroking it. He's like, yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah, statue. He's like, you know what this is? And he puts it up and he's just so proud of it. And it's like the worst thing possible. Because I assume back in the 50s when this is taking place, the time period this is yeah. made, that uh, showing any sexy advertisements in your window of your house was pretty uncouth. Totally. Right? Yeah. And I think, again, like, you know, from Shepard's point of view, is it's like, what is that talismanic <laughs> sexiness that like Ralphie it's, sees? Oh, yeah. There's just like the end of a butt <laughs> but, cheek and then yeah. this leg, you know, <laughs> and it's just this like, my God, you know, and anything then, could be up there. Yeah. And, and again, that to, to your point, that legendary uh, voiceover narration that he's doing, uh, what is it that what's, oh God, the line he says, uh, the old man's eyes boggled overcome by art. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah. He's overcome by art. And you're like, is it? Is that what it is? And she, you're right. She's just like, Ooh, yeah. Ah, He's like, no. let's go, let's, let's go see he, what they it, take out the power because of all this stuff. And let me go see what it looks like from outside. And I, then all the neighbors are Oh man. Right yeah. And that's the end of the scene, which is amazing. The, him, him just is like placing it perfectly in the window and everything. A little bit to the left. I love that it's an ongoing gag throughout the movie too, because she ends up accidentally breaking it. And, 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 and the his, whole mystery of like, did she actually break the, the voiceover? Leg? What does he say? He's like, what happened next <laughs> would be a topic of controversy in the family for decades to come. <laughs> decades to come. I love it. And you're like, yes, of course, this will come up over and over and over. And, like, and he's like, you were always jealous of this land. <laughs> That's right. He goes and buries it in the backyard. <laughs> He tries to glue it together when he's just cradling it. And she's like, that's because it's tacky. And he's like, oh. like just all of that stuff. Again, like there is both things happening on one hand. It, it is reminds me of the 4th of July. Yeah, yes. Well, it's like, it's classic and innocent on one hand. And yeah, then on it the really other is. Hand, like it's very sweet and innocent for the most part. But right? then on the other hand, you're also like, like, okay, here's a good uh, comparison. Um, <laughs> Gene Shepard was one of uh, um, Seinfeld's biggest inspirations when he was first getting into stand-up. Interesting. Because he was like, they're not punchlines. It's that the whole premise of the story has all these moving parts, and the moving parts that have the tension in it means that you can have him repeat the line, it's a major award, and every time it gets funnier 
because you've set up this whole landscape with your it, story. It, it truly is because I was doing research and taking notes and doing my normal thing when I when I do these things and watch it a few times. Yeah. And even before I started it, just writing some of my pre thoughts of like <laughs> things that I know I want to say or whatever. I'm just cracking up, and yeah. I've seen this movie I don't know how many times. Yeah, you know every line. And, and again, the fragile. We haven't talked about it. We said it in the opening, and that was just a joke. <laughs> but like, um, just he's so amped up he can't yeah. even read, right? Well, and it's also that thing that, that dads do, where they have exactly the same amount of information as everybody else does at the exact same time, but they're making leaps of logic where they're like. Pretty solid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they don't know what else to do because yeah. they're so excited. It's those progressive commercials of that guy just coaching those people. Who, totally. Don't, don't be your parents. Yeah. And you're like, that's exactly what he did. You know, he where he's just like, fragile. You know, and she's like, I think that says fragile. And he's like, hmm, yeah. Yeah, must, must yeah, be Italian. Must, yeah. Only the best for me. Yeah. Oh, it must be Italian. Whatever they're sending me has to be. Well, what is it's it? It's imported. Yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it's just so, it, yeah, it's, it's very... It's. It is. I'm. I'm so glad that you I should think, see what it looks like from out here. Yeah. He's like on tears. Well, it's. I think it was in '97 <laughs> that TBS started doing their 24-hour yes. marathons. Yeah. And that that was when it was like, oh, this is a. I think VHS and that type of stuff as well mm -hmm. too. People would buy it and yeah. know they would watch it every year on VHS or well, whatever. Well, and it's that thing where it's like I'm nostalgic for the '80s when I watched this as a kid, but then the movie is aping a nostalgia from the, like the 50s yeah, it's and the a. 40s. Go. Yeah. yeah, it's so funny. So yeah. it just keeps kind of doing that. And of course, things like uh, the Wonder Years. Yeah. Uh, Utilize this same oh, thing, Stand By Me. Great. I mean, uh, yeah, right? no, I hadn't like, thought of that, but absolutely, it's, it's the adult version of of the the kid thinking back and then spinning this yarn that is so much bigger and more bombastic than any of the things that we're even watching that are happening. Timeless movie. Yeah. Um. Last thing I'll say. Do not waste your fucking time watching oh, the second no. one. Did you see it? You watched it? Oh. Peter's Bill Peter Billingsley, not a good actor. He is deeply strange looking. Like anybody who wants to be like oh. I, I agree. Like he's cute as Ralphie. Yeah. But grown up Ralphie, not cute. Well, um, but also just like that like one, you're 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 trying to remake something way past when you should have re like did. I guess they, there was a Christmas story too at one point but um but you're trying to redo something and it's not working and yeah he's just like he's not the main guy like he's fine in a side character like elf or I was watching four Christmases the other day oh. the Vince Vaughn Reese Witherspoon yeah. movie which is actually pretty fucking funny is it? but um but he is like an airport airport agent in that you know just little side things he's fine with and ralphie he's fine but boy it's bad he like is, they're hard they're reaching hard he does something to the uncanny valley nerve in my brain like he's scary looking to me <laughs> like you can be like oh yeah guys like oh what was six cents uh what's the kid from a high what's his name oh hilly joel Austin. yeah you're like yeah he aged kind of weird like he's sure big old guy with a big old beard and you're kind of yeah. like oh it's different as still a, a good actor but oh my god yeah billingsley looks like he looks like a ken doll or something like he doesn't look real like those those are those adorable super blue icy blue eyes on a grown-ass man you're like that's terrifying i agree yeah i agree do they do they pull a leg lamp joke in the second movie no especially not to this level no it, the leg lamp doesn't even make an appearance in the second movie. Um, I'm, it, I not love a, that you not can't a, remember. Not a significant, yeah, like <laughs> not like like oh well, there's this one scene where oh this there was one savior. No, they 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 try. That's the problem is there is no thread. Even though these are a bunch of anecdotes, the thread here was him just trying to recreate the Christmas that his dad his dad would do, and uh. that's pretty much all it is. And so. You know, there's anecdotes around it, but they're not as charming and as funny. And um, the M Melinda Dillon nor um, uh, Darren McGavin are still alive, so they couldn't have them in the movie. So oh, they didn't try lady. to they didn't try to Egon Spangler them in as no, like force ghosts. They, or something. they didn't they didn't try and do that with Melinda Dillon. Um, but there is another mom that plays the part, um, and she's fine an actress. It's not her, but it's just like. The whole, it, it's just the whole premise. Yeah, it's just the whole thing of trying to recreate something. So that that that's what I would say. Stay from. Well, I guess it's Christmas story. A Christmas story, Christmas. Yeah, that's it. Uh, you know what? 
Wasn't going to anyway. I figured not, but I just yeah. wanted to put that nugget out there for some, maybe some listeners. Yeah. That buyer beware. <laughs> yeah, uh, you can't avoid shitty pop culture with your kids sometimes. So. I'm actually the only thing I'm surprised about with that is that it took this long. That's what I'm saying. It's like you're trying to do this way too late. Yeah, yeah. You should have done this in like 1998 when he didn't look as creepy. <laughs> I mean, I think he still would have been deeply unsettling, but it might not be. <laughs> Anyways, amazing scene, classic yes. movie. Yes. Um. <clears throat> Will always be just kind of like a seasonal classic. Completely. I think, I think it is. And there, there's just something about the charm of how they made movies in the 80s as well that just doesn't necessarily get done the same way these days. Yep. And so I was going to say you couldn't make this movie today, and I'm proven right by the one that I just watched uh, a few days ago. Yeah, well, again, I think that it goes back to the original writing that Gene Shepard did, yep. which it's that just was brilliant, right? Because all of those... It. All those jokes, again, like the Ovaltine stuff or like the litany of profanity while he's trying to fix the furnace and it's still hanging over Lake Michigan they to this very day. didn't even go to that day. joke like, either. I was just like, come on, guys. This is easy, yeah, low-hanging yeah, fruit. there's so much here. If but you're going to make Austin Powers too, let's just go for it and just say, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah baby. Yeah, let's, yeah, baby, all the way to the bank. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> all right, so next week, you guys, we will be doing our third installment of uh, the International Horror Festival. Oh, yes. Uh, with our friend Pepe Monza, we will be doing the 2017 film. You got it. Tigers Are Not Afraid. Yeah. So look forward to that. And, yes, please. Uh, yeah. So please tune in, like, and subscribe. All the spaces and places. We hit a thousand subscribers, I know, by the we way. Did. Thanks, Woo! you guys. Thank awesome. you, everyone who's yes. subscribing. Keep watching. We love you. Keep following along. Keep playing along. And we yep. will see you next week. Bye, you guys. Bye.